Like Jimmy Superfly Snooka jumping off the top rope. And earlier this week, I have to shout this out as well. R.I.P. to the great Iron Sheik. Okay, if I'm going to be making an ancient uh, wrestling reference at this point in time, have to shout out Sheiky Baby. Very unfortunate. 81 years of absolute hilarity and being a consummate professional. But no, like something that came out of the absolute blue. Tucker Carlson dropped the first ep- episode of his show on Tuesday. And was it a success? Well, we can just go ahead and take a look. And yeah, um, at this point in time, just about 1.8 million views on the first episode, which was only about 10 and a half minutes long. Interesting. Interesting, right? And I haven't watched through it or anything like that. I know that the subject matter revolves around there's a, a dam in Ukraine that maybe the Russians or the Ukrainians blew up. Realistically, I don't really care all that much other than the fact that Tucker's back and hey man, he's in a brand new studio. Everything looks fine and dandy, drops it right at 4 p.m. I think that's my time locally. I think it's Geo Track that way. Got a nice background and all that stuff. Hey man, seems like a nice, a good monologue. At least the monologue because it's only 10 minutes long. And it was a little bit of a head scratcher to people because he's normally, or you're normally used to seeing him on an hour long broadcast length, length, a long stream, or I guess, what do you call it? Broadcast long show, whatever that outdated model is. But 10 minutes? Interesting. And then yesterday he dropped episode two. And how's that one going right now? That one's kind of spinning. I can just go ahead and uh, probably refresh this and we'll probably get some updates. Oh, 13.5 million at, uh, this has only been a spoiler. I'm recording this, uh, yes, er, I'm recording this yesterday and putting it out here today, but this is only a couple of hours, uh, three hours after it was released. So yeah, um, he, he's doing exceedingly well. I know that this one has, uh, it has a, it has one thing that I kind of want to get to right now. And, um, yeah, like I said, haven't watched any of this stuff. I wish him nothing but the best. It's just not really my type of stuff, unless he's going to be talking about hilarious shit like this. Obama had a strange and highly creepy personal life, yet nobody ever asked him about it. By that point, a leader's behavior within his own marriage, the core relationship of his life, had been declared irrelevant. It was Barack Obama's business, not yours. Yo, shout out Big Mike, but... The response to Tucker's arrival, well, all I've seen is that people tout those viewer numbers. Now, it's interesting because those are just impressions and the way that impressions and what they call views on Twitter, uh, the hundred and just about 108 million views on the first episode that dropped right there. That is only from a simple impression that lasts about two seconds long. So it's not exactly accurate, but there's apparently other ways that you can measure it as well. But long story short, it's about 20% of that view count is kind of what you can roughly approximate it. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but 20 million views ain't nothing to sniff at. Take a look at the ratings that Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, hell, roll them all together and they ain't even touching that. Approximately half of that, a quarter of that. They're not getting anywhere near that. And he's only dropping 10 minute long episodes. Cause how long is the second one? That one's 12 minutes long. So, okay. Okay, interesting. I got a couple of ideas behind why that had to be, but we'll set the stage first before we get into the new information. Tucker Carlson starts new Twitter show weeks after leaving Fox. Is it so much a Twitter show as he dropped a video because there's nothing live about it? There's nothing interactive about it outside of the platform that it's on. So it's a show... But it's only a segment long, so interesting. Former Fox News host Tucker Carlson released the first episode of his new show on Twitter on June 6th, delving into mysterious destruction of of a dam in Ukraine. As of today, we have come to Twitter, which we hope will be a shortwave radio under the blankets. Tucker or Carlson stated towards the end of the video, We're told there are no gatekeepers here. If it turns out to be false, we'll leave. But in the meantime, we're grateful to be here. He signed off the show, dubbed Tucker on Twitter. That is the logo that is down there in the bottom right-hand corner, saying that he will be back on the platform with much more very soon. Carlson, who exited the network more than a month ago under unclear circumstances, spoke of the damage on the Kek, uh, uh, some pierogi and Kubasov dam. I don't know. I'm quarter Ukrainian. I can make those jokes. Well, so can you too. Just don't be a homosexual and have a backbone. Uh, the the Nelezinke Dam was effectively Russian. 
Carlson said. It was built by the Russian government. It currently sits in a Russian-controlled territory. The dam's reservoir supplies water to Crimea, which has been back for the last 240 years, home of a Russian Black Sea fleet. Blowing up the dam may be bad for Ukraine, but it hurts Russia more. And for pre precisely that reason, the Ukrainian government has considered destroying it. So really, once the facts start coming in, it becomes much less of a mystery. What have happened to the dam? And a fair person would conclude that the Ukrainians probably blew it up, just as you would assume they blew up Nord Stream. Oh, he's hitting that one. You wouldn't be able to talk about that on Fox. The Russian natural gas pipeline last fall. And in fact, the Ukrainians did do that, as we now know. So yeah, he started to get into that stuff and just, I don't know, kind of parrot the stuff that people have been talking about on Twitter for a while. But he's got the big megaphone. He's got everybody's eyes, obviously, 108 million views. People are going to take notice of what he's talking about. And you know who else took notice of that? Well, that would be Fox News because apparently they're big butthurt about this because not long after that, I think this was on Wednesday, there was this a cease and desist that was apparently allegedly issued by Fox News because it was a breach of contract by him releasing videos on Twitter even though that wasn't a part of his NDA. That's at least what has been approximated, that Fox News had a little bit of an oversight by not seeing the potentiality of video streaming or video posting on Twitter, and because it was just kind of relegated to about two or three minutes long, okay, if you're going to post that, as opposed to his regular type content, it, Twitter's not going to be a competitor to Fox News. That's why he's exclusively on that platform. Hasn't signed any contracts or anything like that. I would imagine that would have been a part of the NDA in some form or fashion. But then he was also thinking in the back of his mind him and his producers as well combing over that nda also trying to figure out okay they don't want me to do a show for x amount of months x amount of years who knows i've heard things like 2024 2025 when the nda comes up so he's also thinking what else can i do okay post the monologue that's the most popular part of my show at least that's what everybody references so if i just put out a 10 minute long video it's not really the same type of content I was doing before at Fox News, so would that be a violation of the policy? Don't really think so. So that's kind of why I'm thinking he came back with those 10, 10 and a half, 12 minute long videos twice a week. It's interesting to see what he does with the full week that's out there because, yeah, obviously he just dropped another video, so honestly, or so obviously. He's going to at least try to fight back. Don't know if it violated any agreements that are on there or it violated the non-disparagement part of the dismissal, but we're going to see. Tucker Carlson's lawyer responds to Fox News contract breach allegations. A lawyer for Tucker Carlson has issued a response after reports claimed that Fox News sent a letter accusing Carlson of violating his contract by launching his own Twitter show this week. Fox defends its very existence on freedom of speech grounds. Okay, now they want to take Car er, Tucker Carlson's right to speak freely away from him because he uh, took to social media to share his thoughts on current events. Carlson's lawyer, Brian Friedman, that's a good lawyer name, right? Uh, said in a June 7th statement to Axios, appearing to confirm reports that Fox News notified Tucker Carlson's lawyers about a possible contract violation. A letter sent, or a letter was sent by Fox News counsel Bernard Guger, okay, to Carlson's attorney, stating that he is now in breach of his contract with Fox News after he premiered his first episode of the new Twitter show Tucker on Twitter. Taught for those of you in the know. On June 6th, the first installment has generated more than 100 million views, 108 at this point in time. Well, at least when you see it, that's where it'll be, obviously. In connection with such breach and pursuant to the agreement, Fox expressly reserves all rights and remedies which are available to out oh, to it at law or equity. A letter from Guger reads, er, who the hell is it? Oh, Bernard Guger. Okay. According to Axios, Epoch Times couldn't verify the authenticity of the contents of the letter. Yeah, they're just reading or er, just listening to a spokesman, somebody who is intimate with these dealings. About a month ago, Fox News issued a statement saying that it had parted ways with Carlson for unclear reasons. Yeah, there's been some leaks project veritas i th was that project veritas or was that i think that was james o'keefe's group i'll give james o'keefe credit because he's far more reputable sat down with a fox news uh producer of course uh imbibing in some uh you know 
libations, if you know what I mean, saying that it might have been a part of the Dominion voting machine settlement to get rid of Tucker Carlson, which is interesting. And I think we've delved down that rabbit hole before. Okay, he's the loudest voice that's there. And if you want to gut Fox News, it's just too big to topple over with any sort of settlement. But if you get rid of the only reason that anybody pays attention to your channel, well, you save yourself quite a bit of additional litigation. So you can make it make sense, but... As for the people saying that Fox needed you know, the money that's there, why would you cut your rainmaker? It makes no sense, okay? As of June 8th, neither Carlson nor Fox News has issued public comments about the letter sent to the former host's uh, lawyers. Fox News and Friedman didn't respond to requests for comment by Epoch Times about the letter. In one month after Carlson's exit, Fox News has seen its primetime ratings slump, according to Nielsen, but Fox is still the number one rated cable news channel overall, which goes to show just how how much of a lead they had over the competition. A uh, spokesperson for the company recently pointed out in a statement to the Epoch Times. So it looks like, yeah, goofy ass Sean Hannity is just sliding in there appropriately, but there's only so many times you can bring Trump on. With a recent drop in ratings, conservative led boycotts could be devastating for Fox. Well, yeah, that's your apparently your, your, your viewer base, but hey, you could just go ahead and get another Ron DeSantis interview, right? That'll help. Anyways, multiple major brands targeted for boycotts includes Target, Bud Light Maker, Anheuser-Busch have seen their shares plummet in recent weeks. Kohl's, you can chalk up to them as well and a bunch of other products, but those are the two big ones, obviously. Target stock has dropped about 16% in the past month. Well, Bud Light has continued to fall off a cliff. More on them later today, I would imagine. Representatives for Fox News didn't respond by press time to request for comment by the Epoch Times, and they're just too busy going, oh, we got people here, shut up. After the Axios report was published on June 7th about Fox's demand letter, some conservative influencers and journalists called oh issued calls the boycott out while criticizing fox news it's hilarious you say uh, conservative influencers and journalists and then the first person you go to is a uh, raging lefty glenn greenwald he's one of the fine ones he's just more of a truth advocate than anything else who had frequently appeared on carlson's former fox news show wrote that this is pathetic of fox but hey man no bar too low right they fired Carlson, and now their position is he's not allowed to speak. Well, yeah, of course, he's talking about things. Oh, they got one of them boys in the picture right there. Interesting. Well, it is New York, after all. Um, he didn't go to a competing network. He has no contract with Twitter. He's just speaking on social media and to Fox. That's caused the threaten to sue him. They want him quiet. Gre er, Greenwald told, wrote on Twitter. Ideology played a big role in Carlson's firing. I, I guess you're talking about it. Uh, he was increasingly at odds with the GOP establishment dogma. His primary targets, besides the CIA, FBI, were Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham's, along with Biden's Ukraine war policy, which is kind of interesting why his first video was about something to do with Ukraine. Fox wants to reboost the GOP establishment. Yes, of course, that's why they're throwing all of their support behind DeSantis. Another major conservative account, Rogan O'Han. Handley, or DC Drano, oh, I know him, that's interesting, suggested that Fox News viewers vo or boycott the channel. Well, they're already doing that. They claim it's a breach of contract. Maybe we boycott Fox News until they stop trying to silence one of the biggest voices before the 2024 election. Nope. Responding to developments, commentator Jason Whitlock wrote, I have not turned on Fox News since the last day of Tucker's show. Yeah, like a lot of other people. I will not turn on Fox News ever again. Channel doesn't exist to me. It's not an option. I don't watch much TV other than live sports. I watch old movies on Amazon. Yeah, that's nice. I don't really care about your viewing habits there, Jason. Nice guy, but a little fucking verbose at times. So it's interesting. Tucker's a runaway success on Twitter. I don't know how you properly quantify it, that. It's kind of like streaming. When they just tell you it's good, you know, you can just go ahead and believe them and try to suss out the details. But regardless, even if it is 20, or fuck 10 percent actual views of the hundred and some odd million impressions you get that ain't bad that ain't bad at the end of the day and if fox is big shook about that and oh, that's a violation of your contract you can't be posting uh, the social media content that's out there that also raises some flags in my mind as well that oh the establishment media, legacy media, mass media, as I like to refer to them as, they know that the internet is the future. They know that big tech is the next space that they will try to come in and infiltrate. So knowing that, and one of their biggest voices, actually their biggest voice leaving them in order to go off to the alternative, 
just lets you know that they're going to be ramping up the pressure heading into 2024. If it wasn't crazy enough with the news about Trump's indictment dropping yesterday, oh boy, oh boy, it's going to be an interesting 18 months to say the least. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.